What is going on, everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Meta Breakdown. If you did not see episode one, basically what I talk about in these videos is kind of what I think the meta looks like as of right now, and then try and predict a little bit into the future as to what the meta might shift to in weeks to come. So uh, if you haven't seen episode one and want to see it, uh, you can definitely go check it out, but this will be episode two. And so really... um. It's hard to tell how much has changed in a week. I think today being Saturday, uh, the New York tournament is today, the C4 tournament, I believe. And I think that tournament will show a lot of, you know, if people have been holding stuff back because they don't want to use it online or until tournaments, people have been, you know, kind of hiding underground and just labbing, not streaming or anything uh, and saving stuff for these challenger events. So I think we'll see if anything crazy comes out today. So I think today could actually be a very defining day in terms of the meta. But as of right now, I think that, oh, by the way, this is some uh, weekend league uh, gameplay footage in the background. Um, currently 2-0, and only played two games last night. So I need to play 23 games over the next two days. So I'll definitely be grinding on that. But I just want to let you guys know kind of what you're looking at in the background. But like I was saying, defensively, I think you've seen... Uh, the meta definitely shifting to more cover four. Um, I think it was already at cover four. And then if you want to blitz, a, a lot of looping blitzes are kind of what is popular right now if you're trying to get pressure. Um, but really, uh, what you see a lot of is cover four. Um, not so much cover three anymore from what I've seen. Uh, the first like week of the game or the first few days at least, I think cover three was almost all I was seeing. And now I'm seeing a lot more cover four, definitely out of stuff like 335 stack, um, 3 4 odd, stuff like that. Big dime sometimes. Um, not as much big dime as the other formations, but big dime's definitely in there. And then uh, you'll see uh, some, like I said, if they're trying to get pressure, you'll see some looping blitzes. You still see 4 6 normal every now and then. And that's where you'll see the cover three or the cover two invert, really. Um, played Jacoby the other day. I played Jacoby twice and mutt head to head, and he's uh he's beaten me both times pretty handily. So definitely gotta learn and get better. But um the last time we played, the second time we played, he was running four six, and uh, was running a lot of cover three and cover one. So that gave me some problems because he was getting really good pressure out of that cover one setup he was running. And uh, I was having trouble. And whenever I was picking up the blitzes, uh, his D-line was manhandling my O-line. So uh, he, he definitely gave me fits on that. So uh, at least you know top players are still running that 4-6, at least somewhat online. Uh, but um, yeah, so I think that's kind of what you're seeing out of the defensive side of the ball. Now offensively, um, I think it's still a lot of trips formation, stuff like trips, tight end offset, trips, tight end flex, uh, tray Y flex, stuff like that. Anything with like PA crossers and inside zone and levels, I think is what you're seeing a lot of. Um, you see some snugs flip, a uh, single back snugs flip. Um, I know the run game out of there, very effective HP dive with the HP pitch can be a tough combo to defend. And then you've got decent pass plays like deep post, um, HB wheels in there. If you're in the Patriots playbook, you don't have the toss, but you do have drag cross ups, which becomes another good option. So, a single back snugs flip definitely tough to defend. Um, you don't really see, I haven't seen much like gun bunch or gun type flex, uh, especially not as much as you would have seen last year. Uh, but really, it's been a lot of trips, and some people. I haven't really seen any pistol. I've seen a couple people run like pistol bunch tight end a little bit, uh, just kind of as a supplemental scheme to their main scheme, but nothing too crazy like staying in it the entire game. That's another formation is gun bunch tight end you see out of Seattle or uh, the Miami Dolphins playbook. That's the only two playbooks in the game that have that. Um, and that's another formation that's kind of popular because you get the PA crossers and then you get the normal gun bunch tight end stuff if you're in the dolphins playbook you get stuff like tight end corner um i think inside switch is the play where you have it's basically levels on the right side you get a table route and a corner route and on the back side you get a post route 
um, you can do different stuff out of that. Gun Bunch now has an inside zone. It never had an inside zone before last year and years before that. Uh, the only run plays were the HP off tackle and the halfback draw, uh, which were both suboptimal, especially to the inside zone. So now that Gun Bunch tight end has an inside zone, that is huge. It really um, bolsters the formation's running ability. So I think uh, that gave it a pretty nice buff over the past a couple years. Um, other than that, offensively, nothing too crazy that I've seen. Um, it's basically just been a lot of that kind of stuff. You have some people still trying to run split close, which is decent so far. Uh, I think split close got a little harder to defend because you can't cross man anymore. I used to be able to cross man that post route on the left side from HB wheel. Because that's like the main play people would run. So you, you just cross man the HB wheel um, or the post route. And then you do hard flats to take away the table route and the wheel. And then, um, or you could do, you didn't even need to do hard flats. So you could do hard flats or you can go um, man up the table route. That's another option is man up the table route. Put a cloud flat out there to defend against the corner route. You cross man the... Um, the backside post route, and then you just use your, uh, the middle because a lot of guys will put that dig route on the right side of the field to a slant, and they'll run it like that with just one hot route. And then uh, the other cloud flat on the left side will take care of the wheel route. You don't really have to worry about that too much. And usually your pressure, if you're using pressure, will get there in time, or um, at least your pass rush will try and make a play before that wheel route can develop too much down the sideline. But... Uh, you're still seeing a little bit of split close, not as much as I think like the first day or two when the game came out. So I think that's kind of where it's at. Now, uh, last week I did a playbook tier list. Um, I'm not going to update it this week. I think I'm going to update it every two weeks because I think uh, updating it week to week, not too many changes will be made. And it's just not really worth it to, you know, move like two or three books up or down. So I think two weeks, give the meta a little more time to shift around and see what happens. is kind of a better time frame. But if you didn't see episode one, uh, here's the tier list. So you see A tier, Packers, Seahawks, Cardinals, Jets, stuff like that. Um, I think all those are still probably firmly A tier. I think a few changes I would make on this list right now is I would move the Dolphins probably up all the way to S tier. Um, I'd probably move the Bills up to A tier. Um... Let's see, I would probably, I, I'm debating on dropping down the um, the Packers to A tier. Haven't really decided yet, uh, but I think I'll drop the Packers down to A tier. I think I'll drop the Steelers to B, and I think the Patriots have to be considered to go up to S. So, a couple reasons behind those. So, dropping the Packers down to A, um, I haven't really seen many people running Green Bay this year. I think... I thought it would be a lot better because they got gun tight offset tight end. They're one of two playbooks in the game now with that formation along with the New Orleans Saints. Uh, but haven't really seen a lot of people running it. I think gun bunch being a little worse has affected it because last year they did have, in my opinion, the best gun bunch in the game. So now that gun bunch is a little worse, I guess the Packers got a little worse. They still have the wide trips. You still have uh, the doubles, which is good. Um... You, they don't have single back tight flex anymore. They took that formation out the game. That was a formation I really liked. But like I said, they added in the gun tight offset tight end, which I thought would kind of make up for it. But it doesn't seem to be the case so far this year. Haven't seen it a ton. So I think moving it down to A tier would be appropriate. Moving Patriots up to S tier, I think you have to take into consideration very, very balanced playbook the Patriots have. They don't have many of the new, or I don't think they have any of the new, like, flashy kind of stack formations that were introduced this year in Madden 18. But what they do have, they still have the old reliable A slot offset, which is fantastic formation. I think they have the best A slot offset in the game, personally. You get PA post shot, you get levels, you get posts. You get inside zone, you get the power row, the 0-1 trap, you get the entire running game, and you get basically the entire passing game as well. So I think their A slot offset, definitely one of the best in the game. A slot offset, great formation this year. Um, you also get their trips tight end, which is fantastic. Uh, you have trips tight end flex, which is supplemental to that. You have uh, PA crossers out of that, where you don't have PA crossers and trips tight end, standard trips tight end. So you have kind of the best of both worlds there. You have a great gun bunch. You have single back snugs flip uh, without 
the halfback pitch and the run audible is the draw and not the dive which kind of hurts it a little bit uh, but you still get hp wheel you don't have deep post but like i said you still get hp wheel you get drag cross-ups i believe they're the only playbook in the game that has drag cross-ups wheel routes pretty good this year uh so uh, that's a nice play to have in that single back snugs flip so you also get split close pats they're the only playbook in the game with that certain split close um, it's got two running back, one tight end, two receiver personnel, which is a little worse, in my opinion, than the three receiver, one tight end, one running back personnel from the normal split close. But you still get the HB wheel and the power O. You don't get the fullback inside, but you get the HB wheel, power O, and they're the only playbook in the game that has X drag trail, which I think is a fantastic play. You get two post routes on the right side. You get an angle route out the backfield. Just a lot of different ways you can attack the defense a lot of different ways you can create route combos with motion uh, Motioning different receivers motioning the post routes across the formation to create corner routes stuff like that uh, You can get really creative with that play So I think that's a fantastic formation and then they also have other supplemental formations But it's just the the Patriots playbook seems like every year very very balanced very varied uh, You have a lot of different plays at your disposal so you should never, you know, run out of creative options for your offense. Now, Bills going up to A tier, I think, potentially. Uh, my reasoning for that is I think they're the only playbook in the game that has single back snugs flip along with gun snugs flip. Now, I think gun snugs flip is kind of slept on as a compression set. I think it's probably a little worse than stuff like tight flex and gun tight and title set tight end. But it's still solid. You still get decent plays. Bench swap is a good play. You get the quick base as the audible. PA flood shot is a great play. Um, so I think uh, the, the gun snugs flip is a little slept on. You still get the trips tight end offset out of the Bills playbook, which is a fantastic formation, like I've said many times before. And you get other things, such as gun bunch HP strong, which uh, if you guys don't know, has the Z spot from last year in that formation. So in their z spot and this is the gun bunch hp strong not the gun bunch weak uh, you get that z spot post on the left side by the solo receiver like you did last year whereas this year in gun bunch weak that z spot post is gone it was replaced by like a little curl route so uh, you get the original z spot out of there you get an inside zone out of that gun bunch you still get stuff like verticals um you get y trail which is a good concept this year you don't get stuff like corner strike or z spot and go or anything like that but you get other things that are also very effective so i think uh, that's a good formation you get the y trips their y trips is pretty solid in my opinion so you get stuff like that which i think uh, can bump it up to a tier in the right hands now dolphins jumping from b to s i think was a product of me kind of overlooking the Dolphins formation it's, or playbook rather it's a playbook that I probably wouldn't ever run because it has nothing but one back sets so uh, it just kind of worries me whenever I get into short yardage I like going down to something like I form and coming out and you know a stretch and having the option to run you know okay I can run a stretch right I can run an ISO up the middle or I can run, you know, an inside zone to the weak side. So I have, you know, left, middle, right, run options, read the defense, and kind of make a decision off of that. Um, that's kind of more my style of play. But uh, the Dolphins playbook, fantastic. One of two formations, or one of two books in the game that has the gun bunch tight end formation, like I said earlier, the other being the Seattle Seahawks. And their gun bunch tight end is fantastic. You get, uh, you know, a bevy. I think they have like 17 or 19 shotgun formations. Um, you get the trips tight end stuff. Um, I believe it's trips tight end offset or tray Y flex. You get that stuff. Uh, you get, I think, the normal gun bunch week. I think you get empty bunch. I could be wrong on that, but I think you get empty. No, that's Seattle. Seattle has empty bunch. Dolphins do not. Uh, but you get a bevy formation. You get doubles HB week, which is fantastic. Um, you have some great plays out of that formation. But basically, their, their personnel, their three receiver, one tight end, one running back personnel, uh, and how many one back formations you have and they have in that playbook uh, you have like 20 formations at your disposal at the line of scrimmage so the amount of options you have uh, to to you know mix and match and read the defense and check into something else is insane might be the most options out of any a uh, book in the game so definitely very varied and you're seeing people pick up that offense um online and in stuff like salary cap and in money games and stuff i've seen people running that so i think after watching other people utilizing it um definitely 
deserves to jump at least to A tier, possibly S tier in my opinion, although it's not a book that really suits my play style. But that's kind of what I'm thinking right now in terms of the playbook tier list, but definitely going to update it next week in episode three. But at least uh, definitely let me know if you guys have any input on what I just said. If you guys have any thoughts on, say, like, oh, man, you're thinking of moving the Dolphins all the way to S tier. I don't think you should do that. Here's why. Uh, definitely let me know. I mean, I'm definitely down. This is kind of this series is definitely more of a discussion based series where I kind of give my thoughts. And I'd love to hear you guys input as well on what you guys think, you know, the direction the meta is going in, what you guys have seen online, because I can only play so many games, you know. Um, I definitely haven't played as many games as some of the guys. I'm sure some of you guys have probably played more games than me and have more experience. So and definitely your opinion is very valuable to, uh, you know, kind of looking at how the meta landscape shaping out right now. So definitely comment. Let me know if you guys have any opinions, if you guys disagree with me, if you guys agree with me, whatever it is, definitely let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think that's going to be the end of episode two from the meta breakdown. So remember, just a quick little recap. Offensively, still seeing a lot of those trips formations with the PA crossers. Gun bunch falling off. Still see a little split close. Single back snugs flip. Definitely getting some popularity out there. Uh, gun type flex a little bit. Um, but like I said, a lot of trips, a lot of that PA crossers inside zone levels type of three play combo, basing people's offenses around that. Defensively, you're seeing a lot of cover four. I think out of the three, three, five stack and three, four odd in particular is where you're seeing it. You're seeing a little bit of big dime, not as much cover three as whenever the game first started. A cover three kind of falling out of flavor in, you know, in favor of cover four. So that's kind of what you're seeing from that. And then, like I said, playbook wise, I think Dolphins was underrated. They're shooting up. I think Packers was a little overrated. They might be coming down. Patriots, solid as always. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely, like I said, comment. Let me know what you guys thought. Let me know what I can do better for future videos. Until next time, guys, take it easy.